Okay, so I'm doing a bit of a crazy thing. Um, I'm making a 6502 CPU out of logic gates, which is proving to be quite a challenge. Um, and I've made a few PCBs for it so far, and I made a PCB, um, which was my register board, where I kept all the registers, the A register, the X and Y register, and that sort of thing. And I made a little bit of a mistake on that. I totally overlooked the fact that I'd need um, a stack pointer and a program counter and things of that kind of important nature. So I, um, unfortunately, as I've got those on PCB, but I need to mock up, sort of make up on strip board, even though I don't like it, um, uh, something like a stack pointer just to see how they work. So a stack pointer on the 6502 is an 8-bit counter. That's all it is. It's an 8-bit register that you can increase and decrease. So I am going to be using um, 74HC193s for that. Why am I using two? Because they're 8-bit counters. Sorry, they're 4-bit counters. So I combine two of them to make an 8-bit counter. So that's um, an up and down counter. The 74193 is an up and down counter. So uh, the stack pointer can count up and it can count down. So if I connect two of these together, cascading, let's say that's the low 4 bits and that's the high 4 bits cascade the low four bits um, and then onto the high four bits and we'll have an eight bit counter so that will be able to count up and down and you can load a value into it and you can obviously get a value out of it which is the most important thing so speaking of getting things out of it these are not these are not tri-state chips so the outputs you can't you can't put the outs put into a high impedance state which you need to be able to do when you're connecting anything to a buffer so I'm going to have a 74HC541 which is an 8-bit buffer which is going to go on the output side and um, whatever value is in here will go through this buffer and then out to the bus and because this is a tri-stateable buffer you'll be able to set it into tri-state mode where it will effectively disconnect itself from the bus so if we've got the bus here this is the bit that's going to be connected to the bus However, it'd be a little bit boring if it was just like that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put some LEDs in between there and there. So we've got the, the counter here. We've got some eight LEDs here. Well, that's actually 10, but I'm going to use eight of them and um, the, the output buffer here so that we can see what's actually in the counter because otherwise it won't be very visual and I won't be able to tell what's going on. So that's some of the components. Oh, yeah, of course, I'm going to need some resistors, eight resistors in one pack there to just come current limiting resistors on for those LEDs. Then there's only one problem with these counters and that is that they when you load something into the counter the load the what they call it parallel load is an asynchronous load it's it doesn't happen on a clock edge it's level triggered instead of clock triggered so I'm going to put this 74HC753, which is a transparent latch on the input side. So things coming from the bus will go through this latch in order to get in there. And so I can clock those in such a way that it becomes, it's turned effectively the, um, the level triggered load to load a value into here, into a clock triggered load. That's what this um, chip can do. So we can um, increase and decrease the stack pointer by sending a pulse to the count up and count down of one of the chips. We'll, we'll do it to the low chip and that will overflow into the high chip. So we'll be able to count up to 255 and down to zero. Um, we'll be able to see the data on here while the stack pointer amounts, the stack pointer value on here. We'll be able to publish it out to the bus through this one and we'll be able to load a value into the stack pointer. If we want to do something like set stack pointer to 57, we'll be able to load it in through this latch here. Now, against my better judgment, I have decided to use a breadboard, a solderless breadboard. I hate using these things. This one's even a wonky, rubbish, cheap one. But I'm going to have to do it because if I don't, um, I'm going to have to wait three weeks for a PCB to turn up. So... Uh, I'm just going to, and actually, in fact, I don't even know if this is going to work. So I'm going to try it out on this breadboard first, and we will see. I'm going to use the right hand eight LEDs. So I'm going to put that um, there, like that. 
and ground that one. Uh, I'm going to put the counters here. I'm sure I've got this wrong. Everything every time I do soldless breadboard, I always get something wrong. And we'll put that one there. I'll link them up with a few wires. And then I'll connect it up to the rest of my system. Maybe I'll just play with it in isolation, but I, I want to just check, can I do the four operations, store a value in it, get the value back out, increase the value by one, decrease the value by one.